Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our panelists and our viewers at home. My name is Mike Scott, coordinator for the Timmins Local Immigration Partnership, and I'll be your moderator for tonight's event. This is the 27th annual Welcome to Timmins Night and the first ever Welcome to Timmins Live virtual event. It has never been a better time to be well aware of the uh, programs and services offered by our local nonprofits, and we hope you find these events illuminating and engaging. This is only the third of four weekly webinars with our final installment coming next Wednesday, September 30th. There'll be a different 10 organizations next week and a special announcement from one of them, so you don't want to miss it. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Welcome to Timmins Live to learn more. Once all of our panelists are done presenting, we will close with a 10 to 20 minute Q&A session. Please enter your questions at any point under the Q&A tab on Zoom, which is down below, or in the comments section on our Facebook Live, and we'll be sure to get the answers that you're looking for. We have a fully loaded panel this evening, so make sure you take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions. Without further, further ado, it's time to meet our panelists. So from the Navy League of Timmins, we have Lieutenant Anthony Villeneuve. From the United Way Centraide, Northeast Ontario, we have Regional Manager Jennifer Gorman. From the Kinnett Club of Timmins, we have Club President Ashley Johnson and past National President of Kin Canada, Aaron Thompson. From the Timmins Native Friendship Center, we have Aboriginal Healing and Wellness Coordinator, Jalen Renault, and Youth Partnerships and Employment Counselor, Caitlin Kaltwasser. From the YMCA of Timmins, we have Regional Manager, Courtley Burlingoff, and Early Years Coordinator, Julie Nolan. From the Timmins Ringette Association, President Mary-Eve Kutsul, and Treasurer David Laneville. From B-City Timmins, we have the City of Timmins Environmental Coordinator, Christina Beaton, and Mark Geron, who is uh, the chair of the Wintergreen Foundation. Then we have Northern College Recruitment and Liaison Officer, Sumit Swami, and Anti-Hunger Coalition Timmins Good Food Program Manager, Amber McLaughlin. So thank you again to all of our panelists for being here tonight. Before we begin, even though we are meeting virtually, it is important that we acknowledge that we are joined in place on the traditional lands of the Metogamy and Metachuan First Nations in the Treaty 9 region. I would also like to acknowledge the Council of the Métis Nation of Ontario. We would also like to thank our promotional partners, KISS 99.3, Moose FM, and My Timmins Now. Their annual support helps ensure the continued success of Welcome to Timmins Nights. Now it's time for our first presentation from the Navy League of Timmins. Enjoy the show. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Anthony Villeneuve. I'm the current commanding officer of NLCC Timmins, number 165, Navy League Corps here in Timmins. Uh, we, are, we are a youth program that runs for kids between the ages of 9 and 12. We offer various activities and teaching uh, curriculum for your kids. Uh, we teach them teamwork uh, qualities. We teach them, dis we teach them dis self discipline, discipline in teams. Uh, we teach them responsibilities, different forms of responsibilities that they can achieve in their life. Uh, we teach them respect, so respect to, uh, for themselves, respect for others, respect for people above them, people below them once they get higher ranked. Uh, we teach them confidence, self-confidence is one of the key things that we like to do for cadets. We Teach them various different naval terminology into with our throughout their entire throughout their cat career with us. Um, there are different activities that we do uh, is including drill. So there is our drill is standing, marching, uh, uh, band. We teach them how to play different types of instruments. Uh, some of which are the snare drum, the tenor drum, bass drum, the cymbals, 
in the Glock in this field. Um, so we teach them how to play those, we teach them how to march with those, stand with them, playing while marching, playing standing, all that fun stuff. Uh, we have, we teach them first aid, so they learn different ways to help people treat, help um, prevent further injuries for other people. Uh, we teach semaphore, so it's communicating, semaphore is communicating with flags across, to send messages across to each other, um, and learning the phonetic alphabet, so just, just a different way of communicating. We teach them seamanship, so this is just a more further in-depth knowledge for naval terminology, rope work, boat knowledge, and all that stuff that involves naval. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, reach out to our Facebook page, NLCC Commence. Um, everything that we have will be posted once we start back up, or when we're starting back up. So um, I hope we see some of your kids in the future, and like I said, any questions, post them on our Facebook page. We will try to get back to you guys as soon as we can. Thank you. All right, so the best way to get in touch with the Navy League is uh, by Facebook, or uh, they have an email and a website as well if you'd like to learn more. Um, we don't have anybody from the Navy League here yet, but uh, they might be here for the Q&A, so if you have questions for them, uh, go ahead and fire them into the Q&A section. And uh, so next, we'll move on to our next presentation from the United Way Sound Trade Northeast Ontario. This is my community. The place that I call home. I love it here. While there is much to celebrate and so much to be proud of. Issues that can unfortunately go unnoticed. I'm talking about poverty. Homelessness, social isolation, and domestic violence. We need your help to make them unignorable. Together we can create a strong, vibrant community for everyone where people, regardless of their circumstances, have opportunities to thrive. With your support, we can continue to ensure that help is available where people need it most. And that partners can continue to deliver essential community programs that are helping now and in the future. By coming together. Our neighbors, leaders, and partners. You, the hand raisers, game changers, and problem solvers. All coming together to help our communities most vulnerable. I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. So, are you with us? Can we count on you to show your local love? But your generosity and your voice power the work that United Way does. Please donate, volunteer your time, advocate for change, be passionate, be kind, show your local love. That's why I give to the United Way. That's why I donate to United Way. That's why I support the United Way. Thank you. Thank you. Miigwech. Merci. So Jennifer will probably talk a little bit more about this, but this uh, was their community investment stream. And here's their contact information. Let me know, Jen, if you'd like me to go back uh, to that uh, community investment uh, slide. Yeah. But uh, if you can also tell us a little bit more about the United Way and what's up with them. So sure. I just realized, and this is totally my bad, that the contact information that came with this is our communications manager out of Sudbury. So okay. if we can put the other slide on, I can speak a little bit to Timmons. And um, I do want to say that this video is really exciting for me to present tonight. It is a regional video. So the people you'll see in there, they're from Sudbury, North Bay, and Timmins. Our United Way Northeast Ontario covers that whole region. However, what's raised in each community stays in each community. So that's why we have that final sheet where you can see the impact in Timmins with your donor dollars. Um, our, our call to action is first for donations and that is to build a community fund. The stronger that fund can be, the more that we can support the agencies in our priority areas of kids and all they can be, 
healthy people, strong communities, and poverty to possibility. Our, our second part of our call to action is actually volunteer, because if you have the ability to give that way, that's a huge impact in your community as well. And the last is community changers and showing your local love. Um, this is all about working together. So whether we're, we're working with various agencies, we're working with various donors, we can build a stronger community together. I, I have to add that during this time of pandemic, now more than ever, that working together piece is so important. Um, we've seen a lot of funding streams, even ourselves, we were able to receive some, some government funding and federal dollars and get them out to the agencies that, that needed them the most, the ones that were dealing with the food insecurity, those pieces. Um, and, and just being able to work together as a community, it's inspired me. So in a time of a pandemic and the, and the things that, you know, are not great and having to stay in isolation, the pieces that we miss, the things that have happened in our community and in our whole region of the United Way has been really outstanding. I'm proud to be part of that. And kind of the last piece that before we did this video and this campaign piece that I would like to add, um, something that we were approved for, working together um, with the multicultural, sorry, Mike, I'm not saying your agency's name correctly, the Timmins Multicultural Immigration. Do you want to finish it for me? <laughs> Right. The Timmins and District Multicultural Center, and uh, I'm the Timmins Local Immigration Partnership. Perfect. Perfect. And then, and then with Timmins Economic Development Committee, as well as with um, Cochrane District Social Planning and the Youth Hub, all working together, we are able to bring um, a Timmins Volunteer Resource Center here. So we're just in the beginning of it. We just hired a person. She's just been with us for two weeks and, and has that, but we'll be able to centralize volunteers um, and be able to identify the needs of all the agencies and that have their volunteer coordinators and all work together for that betterness of bringing that centralized volunteer system in place. So really excited about that part as well. Thanks everyone. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. And yeah, it's an honor to work on that, uh, that program. Uh, definitely a, a strong need for volunteers in our community at all times. So especially during the pandemic. I have to say, I didn't miss, did I miss anybody on our committee? And if I did, I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, I think you got just about everyone. So, um, so now uh, we will turn to our next presentation from the Connect Club of Timmins. Kin is all Canadian. We are really all about Canada. We are the only all Canadian service club. I think that makes us unique. It makes us special. There's a certain amount of pride we offer in supporting Canadians by Canadians. Kin Canada's motto is serving the community's greatest need. It's a coming together of all walks of life to really create with passion a service to others. Kin is now 100 years old, which is amazing feat. Kin Canada is a national service organization from coast to coast. We have 425 clubs gives us a total of 6,017 members. Uh, we go out and try to raise money. We give it all back to the community. We each have a part to play in finding out what our community needs are. Every need out there is, is worth serving. Anyone who's looking to contribute back to their community or looking to have fun experiences, but also grow in those experiences, this association would serve them very well. Great, so we actually have club president Ashley Johnson and past national president of Kin Canada, Aaron Thompson. Uh, they can tell us a little bit more about the Connect Club of Timmins and Kin Canada as a national organization. Take it away. Hi, hi <coughs> excuse me, hi everyone, thanks Mike. Um, so as Mike mentioned, my name is Ashley. I'm currently the Connect Club of Timmins president. Um, that does change on an annual basis at our annual general meeting. So it is an exciting time because um, we're currently in the beginning of our Connect year. So it's very exciting. Um, currently, we have 15 members in our club. Um, and we are an all-women club, um, but that's not to say that that may change in the future. Timmins does have three um, Timmins, or uh, sorry, Kin Clubs. We have a Timmins Kinsman Club and a Porcupine of Kin, or, or excuse me, the Kinsman Club of the Porcupine. So there are three um, clubs that uh, like to give back to the community and you have the opportunity to be a part of or work with. 
Now this year, um, this past year, sorry, 2020, we've celebrated our 100th anniversary as an association um, and giving back to our community's greatest needs. And uh, that's something that we are extremely proud of. Um, the video that you saw there was part of our centennial clip and documentary, which Aaron, I'm sure we'll talk a little more on later. Um, the Timmins Connect Club uh, currently is, I think, roughly 63 years. They were formed, I believe, in 1957. So that's a huge feat and we're, that we're very proud of. If you're looking to contact us, um, we are on social media. So we are on Facebook and we are currently on Instagram. Um, so our Facebook page is called the Connect Club of Timmins, or you can look for it with the um, what's that called the at symbol <laughs> Timmins Connect, and we're currently on Instagram at Timmins Connect as well. If you're looking to email us, we do have an email at timminsconnects at gmail.com, and if you're looking to phone us, we can provide that information as well 705 570. 1023 and that's my number um, so feel free to give me a call and we will answer any questions that you may possibly have also just to give you a quick idea of what um, some of the community partnerships that we have rolling out uh, or sorry that we have in the past and we are looking to roll out in our future um, we work every year with the Terry Fox um, Association Special Olympics um, a lot of our CF community family members and families that are in need and CF by I mean sorry by uh, Cystic Fibrosis Canada um, Anti-Hunger Coalition is a proud partner, Timmins Food Bank, the Hockey Association of Timmins, Timmins Hospital, Living Space, um, we have high school bursaries, just basically anything that, uh, any association, project, family members in need of the community, that's what we serve to do. And that's just to name a few as well. So this past year, for so basically um, 2019 to 2020, we donated back to our community roughly $17,470, which we are extremely proud of. Um, and that was be roughly a total of 650 service hours between all of us. So we're very proud and we are looking forward to um, learn more about different services in our community and how we can partner up and help the members of our community that much more. Thank you. Great. Um, was there anything you wanted to add, Erin? Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, thank you, President Ashley. It truly is an honor to be able to represent uh, not just our own community, but also, um, as you saw from our video, Kin really truly does have a national impact. And regardless of whether it's time of pandemic or whether it is going back to 1920 when, you know, internationally there was a need for help Kin Canada meets that call. Truly, we live by our motto of meeting the community's greatest need. And that changes from community to community. It changes from era to era. And as we see right now, it changes from month to month. And so we truly are um, geared up and ready to meet those needs. The only way that we can do that, though, is with the support of the community, which we have had in an amazing way, as President Ashley just said. But we are always incredibly excited to welcome new people. Um, and especially if you're new to the city, it's a great way to learn about our community. It's also a great way to learn about each other. And so we are a very inclusive group and we're always looking forward to um, welcoming new members. And so um, we welcome you to give us a call, ask questions, and uh, we're a pretty approachable group of people. And we hope to continue to enable and empower partnerships. And um, that's really, truly what we do best. And we just try to meet those needs. So thanks for the time. Great, thank you both so much for being here. So next we'll turn to the presentation from the Timmins Native Friendship Center. A small group of dedicated people came together with a dream to provide a safe gathering place for the Native community. From those first early steps, the Timmins Native Friendship Center was established in 1974. This realization was influenced largely by arrival of Aboriginal people who had to leave their home reserves to seek employment or to attend the local education institutes. The main concern was with the increasing number of First Nations students coming from the surrounding coastal communities to attend the local secondary and post-secondary schools. 
It was generally felt by the founders of the Timmins Native Friendship Center that these students needed to be pr provided with a positive environment which would reflect their academic performance in a positive way. The board and staff are dedicated to carry out its aims and objectives and to ensure that a healthy atmosphere to be provided to the Aboriginal community. More importantly, the center responds with programs that support the cultural heritage of Aboriginal people and assists with their inclusion and participation in urban life. With this support, we strive to improve the quality of life for urban Aboriginal people living in the Timmins area, providing intervention, direct services, advocacy and support in the areas of health, education, culture, recreation and social services. We are committed to providing a place of rediscovery and opportunities for learning new ways to live in a healthy way. Our vision is to provide a culturally safe environment that creates a sense of belonging for all Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. Our mission is to strive to provide positive growth and change while supporting one's spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical well-being within a culturally diverse community. We commit to do this with understanding and dedication while respecting individuals' values and beliefs. Our mandate is to improve the quality of life for Aboriginal people living in an urban environment. Our philosophy is one that encompasses all people in the community who request assistance. The Timmins Native Friendship Centre offers a wide variety of programs and services throughout all stages of life. The Education and Employment Team offers the Aboriginal Alternative Secondary School Program, the Cultural Resource Program, Academic and Career and Entrance Program, Adult Native Literacy and Basic Skills Program, and the Apatisawin Employment and Training Program. The Community Advocacy Team offers the Aboriginal Alcohol and Drug Worker Program, the Aboriginal Court Worker Program, the Aboriginal Healing and Wellness Program, the Community and Mental Health Program, and the Kije Anishinaabe Nin Program. The Community Health and Awareness Team offers the Lifelong Care Program, Urban Aboriginal Healthy Lifestyles Program, and the Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder and Nutrition Program. The Children's Zero to Six Team offers the Aboriginal Family Support and Wellness Program, the Indigenous Early On Program, the Aboriginal Healthy Babies, Healthy Children Program, and the Aboriginal Prenatal Nutrition Program. The Children and Youth Team offers the Equago AR and HR Program, the Indigenous Children's Wellness Program, Wasanaban Youth Program, and the Urban Aboriginal Healthy Livings Program for Healthy Kids. Lastly, we have the Opake Hoaso Wekamek Child Care Centre. This program encourages and creates a safe learning environment that promotes growth and holistic development for all children through play-based activities. Opake Hoaso is a Cree word that means raising the children. The primary goal is to enhance the overall development of your child to promote the retention of Aboriginal culture and language. The daycare will have well-defined play areas and structured routines. This will be accomplished based on our vision and mission statement, which includes the seven grandfather teachings and the teachings of the medicine wheel. For more information on any of our programs and services, you can contact the center or visit our website. Our office at this time is currently closed to the public, excluding our students. All staff are working in the office and are taking the appropriate measures to ensure safety for all the staff, students, and clients. Some ways that we have continued to offer our programs and supports include virtual and online programming and appointments, meeting outside the Friendship Center or in the community, grab-and-go meals for community members, and program-specific Facebook pages and groups. If you are interested in becoming involved with the Timmins Native Friendship Center, Membership at TNFC shall be open to all persons who are 18 years of age or older, are empathetic with the aims and objectives of this organization, agree to uphold the Center's codes of ethics, and have paid the annual membership fee in full 30 days prior to the annual general meeting. All applications for membership will be subjected to approval at the board at regular meetings. Please reach out to our office for more information.
Miigwech for listening to what the Timmins Native Friendship Center has to offer. For more information, you can reach us at the contact information listed on the slide. Have a good night. Perfect. So, yeah, you can see just a very wide range of programs and services being offered at TNFC. We actually have a couple of their program coordinators here tonight. So Aboriginal Healing and Wellness Coordinator Jalen Renault and Youth Partnerships and Employment Counselor Caitlin Kaltwasser. Is uh, there anything else you'd like to add or tell us about uh, TNFC? Um, I don't have anything to add, um, but thank you for having us this evening. Um, I believe my coworker Caitlin does have something to add, so I'll just pass it on to her. But thank you so much for listening. And like the slide said, if you have any questions or interest in any of our programs, just contact us at uh, the contact info below. Great. Thank you for being here, Jalen. Thank you. Watch AIM. Uh, my name is Caitlin Kaltwasser. I am the Youth Partnerships and Youth Employment Counselor over at the Friendship Center. Um, so. Prior to COVID, you know, we were doing a lot of awesome, cool stuff in the community and it's been, it's been different, um, but we have a lot of great workers who are thinking outside the box and trying to provide services to our community members. Um, we've been really tackling uh, issues like homelessness, poverty, food insecurity during these times. Um, they are obviously big issues that a lot of the agencies that are going to be presenting will be tackling as well. Um, there was a, a part that we didn't put in the presentation about volunteers. Um, prior to COVID, we did have volunteers. Currently, because of COVID, it's not an option. We are closed to the public. However, we do invite you to keep checking in with us to see if that will change because, uh, you know, volunteering is a great opportunity to get involved at the Friendship Center. I mean, currently it's not an option, but hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll be able to tackle that again. Um, and aside from that, I don't really have much else to say. Um, if you do want more information, we have all of our programs and services available on our website. We also have uh, program-specific Facebook pages throughout uh, Facebook. And yeah, you can reach us at the contact information listed here. Miigwech for having us. Thank you for being here, Caitlin. And uh, maybe, yeah, we can connect you with the volunteer coordinator at United Way, and uh, that'll help with recruitment for volunteers as the year goes on. Perfect. Um, so next, um, We'll go to the YMCA of Timmins. Okay, so uh, the YMCA of Timmins is a not-for-profit organization. Um, we have numerous child care centers with throughout Timmins. We have uh, before and after school programs. We have child care programs. We have full day day camp programs for school age children. Uh, we have an early on program and we also have youth programming. We have four full day child care programs located throughout Timmins. We have one on Poplar. We have another one on Bolton in Pope Francis School. We have another one on 4th Avenue in Schumacher in Schumacher Public. And then we have one in South End on Moore Street. And we also have before and after school locations at Bertha Shaw, St. Joe's, Timmins Centennial, and W.E. Miller. So at this time, we don't have volunteer opportunities. To become a part of the organization, if you need childcare, um, you can call our main office and we can put you on our wait list. Okay, so our payment methods, we take everything except for American Express. Um, and you can have automatic bank withdrawals as well or automatic withdrawals off of a visa or credit card. We have very stringent uh, screening protocols right now uh, for all guests into the building and all uh, clients. Right now, the parents are not allowed into the building, so when you drop off, you and your child are screened, and then a staff member brings the child to their room. Uh, we also have very strict guidelines with cleaning. 
um, and we believe that most of these guidelines will stay the same as we move into the future. We do, however, um, think that at some point the parents will be allowed to come back into the buildings um, and we are hoping that later on we'll be able to take uh, more volunteers again. Great, so here's the contact information for the YMCA. Uh, great to see them reopen. I don't think there was uh, many other places that people were dying to have reopened than in, uh, than in child care centers. Uh, we actually have regional manager Courtney Berlinghoff and early years coordinator Julie Nolan here tonight. Uh, did you guys want to add anything to your presentation? Um, I know Julie has a little bit to say as well, but I'd like to just add that we do um, have child care spaces available um, in all of our age groups at most of our centers. Uh, so if you are looking for child care, you can give us a call um, at the number there um, and speak to myself or Julie. Uh, you may get placed on the wait list, but our wait list is very short at this time. Um, so we should be able to accommodate most people uh, quite quickly. Uh, so I don't know, Julie, if you wanted to add anything else. Hi, so like Courtney was saying, uh, if you just contact us, we'll be able to see if we can fit you into our childcare spaces or before and after school programs. Um, I also run the early on program at the YMCA. So um, if you keep, if you like our page on Facebook, we have just YMCA of Timmins. And then we also have an early on Facebook page where, uh, because we, currently are not able to do any programming in person. Um, we have been doing virtual programming. We also have been um, offering uh, giveaways and prizes and things like that. We've had family challenges. So in order to participate, you just need to um, register for the early on program and then um, you're able to uh, participate in the family challenges and prizes are to be won. So yeah. So, fantastic. Thank you so much for all that information, Julie and Courtney, and thank you for being here tonight. So next, uh, we will uh, see a presentation from the Timmins Ringette Association. Welcome to Timmins, and welcome to the Timmins Ringette Association. Ringette was invented in 1963 in North Bay and started up in Timmins in 1989, so this is our 41st season. Fun, fitness and friendship is at our core and the primary focus is on our house league, with players ranging in age from 4 to over 60. Our very successful bunny program is for our youngest players where they learn the basics of ringette including how to skate. House league competition is had in four divisions, novice, petite, tween and JBO, usually with four teams in each division. Before our season starts, we offer two bring a friend nights where kids can come out and try ringette for free and our returning players get a little ice time. After registration is over, the coaching staff gather to distribute the talent as evenly as possible across the house league teams in each division. If you are a seriously competitive player, we normally field A teams to play province wide in the U12, U14, U16 and U19 divisions. We are often highly ranked provincially in each of these divisions and have been provincial champions several times. For our elite ringette athletes that look for an even higher level of competition, there are opportunities to play on regional AA and AAA teams, usually based in Sudbury North Bay. All of our competitive players must also play regularly on our house league teams before they can participate at these higher levels. This exposes all of our participants to highly skilled players and raises the overall level of play for our house league. The arenas that we use to host Ringette are the Whitney in Porcupine, the Archie Dillon Sportsplex in Timmins, and the McIntyre in Schumacher. We have had a special relationship with the Yerko Falls Ringette Association over the past number of years where we offer competition for their teams by including them in our scheduling, and we occasionally play at the Just Jordan Arena in the Falls. We have many volunteering opportunities, on-ice assistance with our Bunnies program, coaching and bench staff, on-ice and minor officials in our host league and competitive programs, or even participating on our board of directors. The TRA provides any training or certifications required for any of these volunteer positions. Many secondary school students have satisfied their 40-hour community service requirement through the TRA. Joining the TRA is really quite simple. Go to our website www.timmonsringette.com, click on the registration button and complete the process. Registration is required for all participants, not only players. 
Once registered, you will be contacted and your journey in Regat can begin. Our season fees for first year bunnies is $75 and $150 for returning bunnies. All other divisions are $400. Financial assistance may be available through Sport for Kids Timmins. The Timmins Ringette COVID-19 response is the Ringette Ontario 5-stage return to Ringette framework. Currently we are at stage 2 but we are on the brink of advancing to stage 3 or return to modified play. We are just waiting on the city and the Porcupine Health Unit to allow that move. We look forward to seeing you at the rink. Perfect. So, Ringette was invented in North Bay. I didn't know that. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, we actually have Mariev Kutsil, president of the uh, Timmins Ringette Association, and webmaster David Laneville. Anything else you'd like to add, folks? Um, I do actually. I can actually clarify a little bit more about Ringette, uh, where it was invented. Not only in North Bay, that's where it got played officially, but it got invented in South Porcupine in a basement. And then the gentleman moved to North Bay. So we kind of have a little bit to do with uh, the invention of Ringette here in Timmins. Um, so just quickly, uh, we do have uh, permission now. We have moved on to stage three. This is the big news that we have to announce today. We got the permission uh, this afternoon. So from now on, Ringette will be allowed to play games back in the arena here in Timmins. Um, for all our players, uh, stay tuned. You know that new app that we've been uh, enforcing on everyone. And uh, now we do everything online. We do it with uh, either your cell phone or your laptop. All these uh, technicalities that have to be checked now to attend the arena. Uh, we do everything online. We're very uh, high tech. But if you need help with high tech, that's why we have our webmaster on right now. Also, uh, he's the one that did the video. So I got to give him props too. Thank you, Dave, for all your hard work you've done. Uh, Dave is uh, the one that is bringing us up to date with uh, the technology for this year, which is a very great help uh, with the COVID-19. Um, just a quick note uh, for people that are aware of uh, Katrine LeMay-Dome. Uh, for those that are not aware, she was a ringette player and she is also returning now to ringette. Uh, she plays in Calgary. And according to her, ringette is the best sport and it is also the fastest sport on ice. Um, she is a big promoter of ringette. Uh, we are known to create really good skaters. We are very known for the bunny program, uh, which is affordable, $75 for the first year. And those are for the four to eight years old, uh, to seven years old, uh, excuse me. And um, we teach them how to skate. We, uh, we are looking at getting the program started for all the bunnies that are already registered with us. Be patient, it's coming. We're working really hard at getting this COVID-19 checklist done and getting you all safe back in the arena. We have started uh, for all our U10s and up. So if you're seven years old or older, uh, you've probably been on the ice now with us, or if not, you're really soon gonna be on the ice with us. All the younger ones, it's coming. Uh, parents, if you have any concerns, any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can go through our website or you can use the email. Uh, to uh, get a hold of us and ask any questions. And also, uh, in regards to COVID-19, we do take COVID-19 very seriously. Uh, we do take the procedures very seriously. So if you fear uh, for the safety of your child, but you'd still be interested in getting them maybe looking into the program we're at, feel free to reach out to us. We are open to uh, finding maybe ways of reassuring parents if that's a fear that you have for your child uh, for either health reasons or, or maybe someone in your house that has health reasons that you're fearing uh, joining and getting your kids involved in sports. Uh, we are very open to that. As you can see, I have a buff uh, on my forehead. This is something that we are providing to every child uh, under the age of 12 that will be joining Ringette this year. So this can also be used as a mask for the, the kids as they're going on the ice. They put it back in their necks and then when they get off the ice, they themselves, even if they're four years old, are able to put it back on their nose. So we, we promote a lot of independence. Uh, we also have the masks for the older 
uh, players that will be joining us. Uh, most of them already have received them. We're providing all our players. When you do register with Timmins Ringette this year, we are going to provide you a mask. You don't have to just wear it when you play Ringette. You're welcome to wear it anytime that you are in town or at school. Uh, and if you're a friend or family or grandparents or just a fan of someone that's playing Ringette and you want to promote us and you want to help us out because this year we have lowered our fees compared to the other years. Uh, we are very open with dealing with uh, our, our parents, trying to help us out uh, to get to the ice. So if you want to get uh, any of those apparels that I've just shown, you can go on our website and purchase them. And it's going to encourage us and help us out also in this uh, new COVID-19 era. Uh, so please, um, if you have any questions about Ringette, uh, if you are a, gr a girl or a boy, we are open to both sexes, mostly known for girls. But you know what? We are open and we've had boys play throughout their years with us too. Uh, check us out and uh, come and check us out uh, live on Facebook for today or check us out through the Facebook. We do have uh, someone answering questions or through the website uh, and we are open for uh, discussions if uh, you're interested in Ringette but have some fears about COVID-19. Reach out to us. Thank you. I just, I just want to have uh, one little piece extra that uh, let us know registration is still open. You can still register to play ringette if you're if you're interested. Uh, some people have had been a bit uh, hesitant to uh, register, uh, but now that we are, uh, as of this afternoon, uh, able to move into stage three uh, for return to play for modified play, uh, there's a, a a a better chance that uh, you'll get some ice time and you'll you'll have uh, look for that competition you've been looking for. Unfortunately, ringette Ontario. Uh, in the presentation, I talked about our competitive program, and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to affect us yet, but Ringette Ontario has cancelled the uh, 2021 single and double A and the provincial petite uh, tournaments, which is the, uh, the the level of play that uh, our our elite go for. Uh, so uh, not sure how the board's going to handle that. We'll find out tomorrow night at the board meeting. But uh, for now, uh, Ringette Ontario has cancelled the uh, 2021 championships, which are usually in April, uh, March, April of at the end of the season. So that's uh, that's out the out the window. But uh, I have uh, gave the rest of the information, and you can always look us up online. And if I can add just quickly, uh, for the we do have a plan for those that are looking for higher ringette. Uh, we will provide something local. We're not going to be allowed to to travel outside, but we will try and and make sure that you can develop. Uh, if that's what you're looking for. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you both for being here. So next up, we're going to turn to B-City Timmins. Hi, my name is Christina Beaton. I'm the Environmental Coordinator with the City of Timmins, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about uh, B-City. So the City of Timmins became a B-City in September of 2019. And with that designation, we are committed to creating, educating, and celebrating pollinators and pollinator habitats within our community. Our uh, Bee City is, we have a Bee City pollinator team, and that team is made up of a group of community members from horticultural societies, um, city staff members, we have local mining companies involved, and we have a um, the conservation authority and a local um, edible and uh, native landscaping company and so this wealth of knowledge we're using that to be able to create these events and um, uh, create a, a more sustainable community and uh, pollinate for volunteer uh, volunteering activities right now we don't have anything uh, in the works but we're looking in the spring of 2021 and in the summer to have some events to be able to celebrate pollinator habitats and um, be able to promote the B City Canada designation. And so, um, if anybody's interested or has questions about B City, they could contact me at environmental.services at timmins.ca. And uh, what you can do to participate is uh, create a pollinator friendly garden. And uh, you know, we'd like to see this across the community. So, if you're interested, you can also visit bcitycanada.org for some tips and also take the pollinator pledge. And um, there's a pollinator map. A protector map that you can see on the bcitycanada.org um, website and you can see everybody across Canada has taken that pledge so we encourage you to do that as well. 
Hi, my name is Jen Nobel and I am the owner and designer at a local company called Northbound Bloom and we focus on edible and native landscapes. So bee city is something near and dear to our hearts. Um, being able to protect our local pollinators is incredibly important to um, uh, our biodiversity and the health of our local ecosystem. So anyone can create their own pollinator friendly garden and we actually encourage even if you're not even a gardener, it's okay. You can start to take steps towards creating a pollinator friendly garden or just a pollinator friendly yard in your front or your backyard. Or if there's a business nearby close to you and you want to encourage them to start planting things that will help the health of our local pollinators, we encourage that for everyone. Um, so there's a few tips uh, that you can follow to create a pollinator, pollinator friendly garden and as you can see as an example here our beautiful Bannerman Park um, creating diversity in our in your garden is one of the biggest things you can do not just planting one species but planting a multitude of species specifically native plants if you are able to get a hold of those and some of our local nurseries they sell those and you can just ask around with our local horticultural societies a lot of people are happy to split up some native plants that they are growing personally in their backyards and share them with other people um, so our native plants are actually going to help support our native pollinators so if we go and we plant annual plants those are plants that you plant once a year and you have to replant them every year a lot of times those annual plants are not indigenous they're not native to our area so it doesn't mean that they're not healthy for our pollinators it just means that they won't support them the best um, so the more diversity you can plant uh, the, the more the healthier our pollinators will be uh, we also recommend if you can adding just like a small water source to your garden it can just it can be a bird bath if you have access to that it can also just be a simple Tupperware container that filled with water maybe even just filled with rainwater uh, whenever it rains and that will give a water source to our local pollinators as well um, adding and leaving debris on the ground is also a great idea for our pollinators as well they need habitat as well and in an urban setting it's hard to find sometimes you know we like to really manicure our lawns we like to rake our leaves and that actually eliminates a lot of the habitat for our local pollinators so if you're able to leave your leaves on the ground in the fall and in the spring and not necessarily rake them up that will help or you can leave if you want a little bit of a cleaner look you can grab some rocks or some twigs or some branches and kind of leave them in piles organized piles maybe around your yard and that will help provide opportunity for our pollinators um, to uh, create habitat um, and last but not least it's so important that we start to reduce the amount of pesticides that we use in our front and our backyards um, so if at all possible in your yard try to take a step towards managing your lawn and your plants without using chemicals because our pollinators come in they come to check out your yard they check out your flowers and if there are insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, any sort of chemical on them, we're going to start to kill off our local pollinators um, and we want to encourage the health of them as much as possible. So the, the elimination completely or reduction of uh, chemicals in your yard is something huge that we can do in our city and in your backyard. Great. So here is the contact information for B City Timmins and Northbound Bloom. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, City of Timmins Environmental Coordinator Christina Beaton and Board Chair of the Wintergreen Fund Mark Jerome here with us. Anything you'd like to uh, add to your presentation, uh, folks? Uh, Mark's going to speak a little bit uh, about. Uh... Well, I just I just brought an example of exactly what Jen was talking about. But just one thing that Jen did mention about the lawns and keeping the uh, leaves on the lawn. The great thing is leave the leaves on the lawn. And use your lawnmower, your mulching mower, and it'll just get rid of them by mulching them into the lawn. But talking about local uh, pollinators, and a great pollinator we have around here is the milkweed. And on my way over here tonight, I actually looked to see how they're doing, and the milkweed are doing their thing. They're becoming much, much like a weed. And uh, this seed, of course, this has been local here in town for many years, and this uh, milkweed is a, a flower that... Um, 
is really great for pollinators. And as it turns out, it's also the only plant that the monarch butterfly larva will eat. So in the last five years, before that, we hadn't seen many monarchs in town. But uh, now that this, we've been expanding with this, this specific plant, we're actually, see, we're actually seeing more butterflies, the uh, monarchs in town. So the monarch is one of the pollinators. And uh, this is just one example, as they talk in the video, of how great local seed being collected can be used. And uh, the other thing is just local seed is, of course, the Porcupine Library has a seed library. So they always encourage people that have native plants, let something go to seed and provide it to the seed library so that uh, others then can have that seed available to them. And yeah, it's also a wealth of knowledge as well, being part of the seed library. Um, if you're able to participate, you can ask lots of questions. We have horticultural societies available. We have local experts that we can um, tap into their knowledge to be able to create pollinator friendly gardens. And uh, if, you know, if you also want to browse through the bcdcanada.org, they have a lot of really great tips and uh, on how to create a pollinator uh, garden and uh, taking that uh, pollinator protection pledge. Uh, trying to get a few more people from the um, city of Timmins and our community to be able to take that pledge so that we can uh, put our mark on the, uh, on the map. So if you have any questions, our contact information is there and we encourage you to uh, create a pollinator friendly garden. Great, thank you so much for both being here. Um, if you remember last week, if you were joined us last week, there we had the Timmins Public Library and the Porcupine Library, and they did talk about their seed library, so that's great. Uh, very cool. Um, and uh, so next up, we have Northern College. and recruitment officer here at Northern College. COVID-19 pandemic changed everything. Welcome to Timmins Night is now Welcome to Timmins Live. And I have a pandemic beat it, and I kind of like it, but enough about it. We are going to talk about Northern College and the great things it offers. Let's do it. Northern College has been part of our communities for almost 60 years. We have campuses from Timmins to Musini and Kirkland Lake to Haleybury. That kind of says it all. We have a pretty big demographic that we cover. We also have various program offerings from the School of Business, Community Services, Health Sciences, Emergency Services, Tech and Trades, and even Apprenticeship Programs. Northern College has over 200, let me repeat, over 200 unique pathways to further your diploma into degree programs. We also have Algoma University here in Timmins campus offering their Bachelors of Social Services. You will not be just a student ID here at Northern College. You will be known by your name and that makes us very unique. We have small class sizes, one-on-one -on -one approach and welcoming learning environment. We also have upgrading opportunities for those who are wanting to attend but require courses for acceptance. Northern Training Division offers short-term training opportunities and also specific courses for the industry. Expert on campuses like student advisors, financial aid officers, and student services are always there to help. Lastly, visit our website, explore our program, watch our videos on YouTube, and you can also connect with me for tours and more information. Perfect. So we're very fortunate to have uh, Sumit Swami here tonight. Uh, as he said, he's the uh, recruiter and uh, liaison officer for Northern College. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Sumit? Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, when I saw the video, then 
that's where I realized what I was thinking about that script. I just wrote it down last minute. <laughs> it it's sounds great. really. Deep. <laughs> But yes, Northern College is um, one of the smallest colleges in Ontario, and uh, pretty much we have the same services as any other bigger colleges, and that makes us very unique in that avenue, because we have the same kind of technology that can be found in any bigger college like Humber or Centennial or any uh, big Southern Ontario institutions. But that gives our students more exposure to the equipment and they don't have to book any time. It's very free for them to use at any given point. Plus being small, with a population of almost 5,000 students, we are able to also give more to the students back too. So usually we give out almost um, $400,000 back in bursaries. So pretty much if you apply, each student might end up with $1,000 towards uh, bursaries too. And from last three years, even before pandemic, um, we were giving out $1,000 bursaries um, to students who enrolled in our two-year program or a three-year program or even a bachelor's pathway program. So usually students get so much back um, being a part of the small college and it's very helpful for them to even pay the fees. So pretty much the video says it all and that was the piece that I was missing out on. But if you have any questions, if you're a newcomer here in Timmins, if you're a newly immigrant too, and if you want to have any kind of education, please do visit us. Um, we usually have, it, we try to make our processes one-stop shop so pretty much if you come in, we can give you um, courses if you're missing any uh, important credentials for any program, we can do that too. If you are an immigrant from different country and if you have to have your educational evaluation to pursue more education in Canada, we can do that too. If you're still a Canadian citizen or if you're you know, Canadian by birth, you can also come in and we always have seats available mostly. Um, some of the programs are highly competitive, like a uh, veterinary technician program or nursing program or trades. They usually um, take away the seats fast, but some of the programs are still open. So pretty much that would be all, Mike. Great. Well, thank you for being here, Sumit, and uh, thank you for all the work uh, that you do to uh, help Northern College, but also our community workforce thank and you. Uh, community grow. Um, so next, we're going to turn to the Anti-Hunger Coalition of Tunes. Anti-Hunger Coalition Timmins works with local partners to increase accessibility to fresh, healthy food. Our Good Food Box program breaks down economic and transportation barriers to eating well. Collective cooking engages people to learn new kitchen skills and prepare take-home meals. And our community garden sites provide shared space to grow the freshest produce. Acts empowering programs enhance emergency food services by providing increased healthy food options. Through creative and collaborative community-based solutions, we're all working together for a food secure community. Excellent. So you may have noticed that uh, we've been collecting donations on our Facebook page for Anti-Hunger Coalition this year. Usually we do have a food drive at Welcome to Timmins Night and donate uh, the collected non-perishables to a local food service, um, food security provider. But um, obviously this year physical food drive is not possible. So um, we're doing our best to collect donations for Anti-Hunger Coalition this year. We've pledged to donate half of the proceeds uh, from our registration this year for Welcome to Timmins to Anti-Hunger Coalition. So please give generously if you can. We actually have the Good Food Program Coordinator, Amber McLaughlin here to join us. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Amber? Yeah, so I'm just gonna go over our programs a bit more and then I've got a couple of new programs I'm gonna be introducing. Um, so our Good Food Box program is a program that is open to everybody and anybody that wishes to access it. Um, the way that the program works is that we have host sites around uh, Timmins that you can go in and you can purchase your order um, and then pick it up later on in the month. Um, but due to COVID, we, most of our host sites have um, been closed to the public, so we are mainly taking online orders. Um, this online order form can be um, obtained if you send us a message on Facebook, give us a call, shoot us an email, um, and we'll get back to you. Um, our collective cooking workshop has pretty much come to a stop because of COVID. Um, so within the next couple of months, we're going to be looking at implementing a new um, cooking program called Food Fit that will be a 12-week a 12 week um, program where it focuses on healthy eating and fitness. Um, so that's super exciting. 
Um, our community garden program, we have two different locations. We have one in Timmins, it's on the corner of Vanderman and Hutie, um, right by the dog park and the Terry Fox Trail. And then we have one in Salt Porcupine um, behind the residence at Northern College. Um, and so the way that this program works is that individuals can rent out plots where they can grow um, their own produce and connect to the land. Um, and we have our renewal season for 2021 coming up November 1st. So anybody interested in that can also reach out to us by email or phone and we can get you connected with that. Um, one of our new programs that we have um, with COVID is our emergency food hamper program. Um, so it was initially implemented in partnership with 211 and the South Porcupine Food Bank. Um, the way that this program works is that 211 takes in registrations and then we will follow up with these individuals and we're, we're going to be home delivering um, essentially what would be their food bank, their monthly food bank um, items. Um, this way, anybody that can't get out of their homes for many different reasons, they can still um, get food um, to them. Um, another exciting thing is we will be implementing within the next couple of months, a mobile um, good food market. So this is a pop-up style market that will go to um, different locations in Timmins that um, we can identify as food deserts. So essentially what a food desert is, is an area of town that doesn't have immediate access to fresh, healthy, affordable food. Um, so this can be for many reasons, transportation, um, being close to a grocery store, but maybe the grocery store is a little bit more expensive or only having immediate access to a convenience store. So there's many different reasons um, for an area to be identified as a food desert. So we want to be able to help individuals with this program by going to um, areas of town that they would identify as a food desert, bring this market there, and then they'd be able to purchase wholesale priced, um, good quality foods. Um, so we'll be doing that in partnership with our local grocers and farmers. Um, and yeah, so I'll also kind of talk about our fundraisers um, that we have. Um, so the first one will be coldest night of the year. That will be coming up at the end of February. Um, so this is one of our biggest fundraisers. It's one of our super fun fundraisers. And essentially it's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser with a walkathon style. So um, friends will get together in a group, fundraise some dollars, they can challenge other teams. Um, and then I think it's the 20th of 2021 this year, but everybody will get together. Um, and then we'll go on a walk outside in support of those in our community who are hungry, hurting, and homeless. Um, so you'll get to stop at different rest stops along the way um, and try some tasty foods. Um, the Friendship Center has been one of our rest stops the two years that we've done it so far, and it's definitely a hit. Um, so that is a really fun one that's coming up. We're hoping that it will still be on, fingers crossed, but with COVID, anything can happen. Um, and then the last fundraiser I will talk about is Empty Bowls. So this is a fundraiser put on by the Connect Club of Tenants um, in partnership with ACT. Um, definitely a fan favorite. Um, and essentially what this um, fundraiser is, is uh, individuals will get to purchase their tickets. They'll get a, a handmade bowl by the Northern um, College Pottery Club. Um, and then they get to try local soups um, from our, some local chefs. Um, and while that's going on, there's a silent auction. Um, but the purpose of this event is for individuals to acknowledge that there are people in our community who have empty bowls. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Amber. I know uh, you guys have been really working hard to, to lead the way to a food secure future for, for Timmins. Um, so uh, that's it, folks. That concludes our presentations for tonight. Um, so we can scroll over to the Q&A portion of the show. Um, I noticed that a lot of the Q&A has been active already. So uh, our panelists are answering uh, in the, the Q&A section there. So if you wanted to have a quick look down there, maybe already been answered.
And our YouTube channel uh, at Welcome to Timmins Live. You can also catch week one and two uh, that if you, in case you missed it. Uh, once again, on behalf of myself and our organizing committee, I'd like to say thank you to our panelists and our viewers at home. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Stay safe and have a great night.